On the 30th of May 2019, EE launched the United Kingdom's first 5G commercial service in five cities, specifically London, Cardiff, Belfast, Birmingham, Manchester and Edinburgh. Now unfortunately, this was right in the middle of my written exams, so I didn't have time to cover any of the sort of launch stuff at the time. However, through a bit of luck and keeping up with this stuff anyway, I'd already made a web page detailing a number of their 5G masts and the two different architectures long before their launch had actually happened. And that web page will be updated with the content of this video by the time this video is published. I also happened to come across a EE-88R 5G mast in Hull, which I filmed the location video of, which was the last uh, video I put up onto YouTube. Irritatingly, pretty much immediately from the launch day, some of my friends managed to get some 5G devices and the numbers they got off them were rather envy inducing because I still don't actually have a 5G device because exams and whatnot but I hope to get one soon. Anyway today's video will be focusing on the other architecture of EE's 5G masts. EE deploys massive MIMO 5G in the busiest of the busiest locations. I've primarily seen it in ultra central London, surround St Paul's area which also happens to be near BT's headquarters as well. The hardware on the site looks like this. On the left is the Huawei AAU5613 64T 64R massive MIMO panel. This has 96 antenna elements, like I say it's capable of 64 transmit, 64 receive and also has the bandwidth capability to carry EE's entire 5G 3500 MHz bandwidth. The panel on the right is a passive Huawei ATR panel which carries their 4G services for their 4G customers as well as the anchor for the non-standalone 5G deployment that they have. And this ATR is fed by a series of remote radios. A pair of 5507s which are 2T4R remote radios but they have two feeders each and then they're paired up for 4T4R on L18 and L21. So that's both L18 carriers, 30 MHz paired of 4T4R as well as the 4G 2100 MHz also with 4T4R. The third remote radio is a 3262 which is 2T4R2600. Now these three remote radios are the same as on the ATAR example which is why I'm using their picture here and they all together output eight feeders and the way that these then go into the six ports of the ATR is through diplexing of 18 and 21 from 15507 with two of the feeders from the 3262. And the 5507s also deal with EE's 2G 1800MHz as well with the 3G 2100MHz coming off a separate antenna on this building. So the architecture of the 2G, 3G, 4G on this massive MIMO 5G site is actually pretty much identical to on the ATAR site which uses the Huawei AOCs just on the massive MIMO site where the ATR antenna is used there is a diplexer to convert four feeders into two so why are there these two 5G architectures and what are the pros and cons of each one? Well, Massive MIMO provides greater coverage as well as greater capacity compared to ATAR. Which sounds great, but with that comes the weight of the Massive MIMO panel as well as 
the situation where you have to have a massive MIMO panel as well as the other panel for the Anchor and the 4G from 4G customers. Whereas with the 88R approach, it can all be, all of EE's technologies can all be fitted on one antenna, which saves space as well as being easier from a lease agreement point of view as well. In addition, Massive MIMO is harder to plan from an ICNA point of view compared to 88R, which can be important in environments where there is a large amount of deployed spectrum from multiple operators already, whereby the RF level in the environment will already be relatively high and therefore avoiding breaches is more complicated and more important. Thanks for watching this video about EE's 5G Massive MIMO architecture. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't seen the 88R video, it will be linked below and in this playlist. Um, in future, I plan to make some more videos about 5G and how it works. So for example, how the non-standalone 5G works and how these high speeds are achieved through the use of 4G as well as 5G providing the throughput. Of course, when the other operators launch, I will also make videos about their deployment architectures as well.